In this video, you will learn how to use CSS Grid to define a responsive website layout with navbar, sidebar, main and footer, and maybe even more sections if you want. We will also cover important concepts like how to make the navbar follow me around when I scroll and how to make a sidebar like this responsive for our smartphone users. So for watch time purposes, stick around until the end where you learn the more advanced things. When creating your website in HTML, you should use semantic tags. For the navbar, use the nav tag. For your sidebar, use the side. The main content will be inside the main tag. So let's create an h1 heading, for example. And the last thing is always the footer. This is where you provide additional links and resources. These tags do the exact same thing as a normal div container, but they do have a semantic meaning, which is better for SEO, website crawlers, and accessibility tools. So make sure to use them when they make sense. In the browser, these elements will be placed one below the other. To turn this into our desired grid layout, we have to address the body in CSS. Apply display grid and use the grid template columns property. Here you can define the size and amount of columns we want to have. If I write 300 pixels, exactly two times, then I end up with two columns, each being 300 pixels wide. Very simple. By inspecting the page in the browser, we can click on this grid button next to the HTML body. This will highlight the grid layout with these purple lines. This is just to see the grid better. All right, instead of using fixed pixel values, we could also use fractions. The values 1fr, 1fr are responsive units. They will give us two columns that will take up the entire website's width. They have the ability to grow and shrink to fill out the entire website. The next property I will show you is the key concept in CSS Grid when it comes to defining your actual layout. Using Grid Template Areas, we can define where all elements should go. Remember, we want the nav bar to stretch over two columns. We have a sidebar on the left and the main content and footer on the right side. We can define this layout using strings. Each string inside the grid template areas property is responsible for one row in our layout. The first row should be the navbar. So just write navbar two times because I have two columns. To define the second row, we have to use another string. Here we have the sidebar on the left side and the main content on the right side. And the last row has the sidebar on the left side and the footer on the right side. This is how our layout should look like. But on the website, nothing changed. This is because these names, navbar, sidebar, etc. have no meaning. We have to assign these so-called grid areas to our elements. So select the nav and apply grid area navbar, which has to be the exact same name I used up here. The aside tag will have the grid area sidebar. The main is main and the footer, grid area, footer. As we can see, now our grid layout has changed. The elements are arranged exactly how I wanted it. The navbar is at the top, the sidebar on the left, and the rest on the right. But I don't want the sidebar to be this big. Currently, it takes up 50% of the website because I used fractions. So just use 300 pixels for the first column, and the second column will just be one fraction. This way, our sidebar will maintain a consistent size, and the rest of the website can grow and shrink responsively. But there is still one annoying thing. The height of these grid areas is pretty ugly. You see, normally we don't want the footer to be up here. The footer should always be at the very bottom of our website. But since this website is almost empty, it will be up here. Adding more content to the website in HTML will push the footer down. But that should not be necessary. So let's fix this in CSS. First, we have to increase the size of the body. Apply a min height of 100 viewport height to make the body exactly one screen size tall. Also, make sure to use min height and not height so that the body can grow if there is more content. All right, now we have this layout in the browser. This is because we haven't properly set up our rows. So far, we only used grid template columns. So use the property grid template rows to define the rows of our grid layout. The first row should have an automatic size, auto. The second row should be able to grow and fill out any available space. So we use one fraction. And the last row, which is our footer, should also have an automatic size, auto. And that is already close to what I want to achieve with this layout. Using the value auto for the first and last row will give us the chance to style the navbar like we want it to be. Maybe apply a padding to make the element bigger, without messing up the grid, since auto will always adjust perfectly to the size that the element requires. Applying a padding on both the navbar and the footer is perfectly fine, as the layout is prepared for that. Having applied one fraction for the second row will make this row grow, which will also push down the footer. This is just perfect. No matter how much content we have inside, the footer will always be down here. 
Let's also use a background color for the sidebar to see it properly. And remove any unnecessary margin and padding that is applied by default. And by the way, these styles are just for demonstration purposes. I know that this website is pretty ugly, but in this video we are focusing on the layout and the responsive part, so don't worry about that. Especially the next concept will be very important to understand. What happens if we add more content to the website, and therefore increase the size of the website? Simply add a paragraph with 2000 random words and see what happens. The website will be big enough to scroll down, but this will make our sidebar and navbar disappear. They scroll out of place. But in most cases, this is not what we want. We only want to scroll this area and the navbar and sidebar should stay in place. To achieve this, let's go to the navbar and apply position sticky. If you've seen my tutorial on positions, then this will be easier to understand. Define top zero as your sticking point. And now the navbar will follow me around. The value top zero means having the sticking point zero pixels away from the top edge of the screen. Using top 100 pixels, we'll place the sticking point down here. Let's try the same thing for the sidebar. Apply position sticky and top zero. But in the browser, we can see that we run into a problem. The sidebar is still going away when I scroll. That is because sometimes we have to define the aligned self property to provide extra information about the alignment of this element. If we apply align self start, then the alignment will be at the start of the aside element. Applying align self end, then it will be down here. This is where the aside element ends in HTML. Using these values also has an effect on the height. We can fix this later. But let's apply start again. As we can see, now the position sticky is working. The sidebar is sticking to our position of top zero. When I scroll down, the sidebar will stay in place. But actually, we don't want to use top zero as the sticking point. Instead, the sidebar should be right here, just below the navbar. For that, we need to change the top value to be the size of the navbar. But we don't know the size of the navbar. So let's find that out. Inspect the navbar in the browser and use the developer tools to see the height value right here. 50.4 pixels. So let's apply this exact value on the top property. And now this will be the sticking point of the sidebar. We can see that when I scroll on the website, both the sidebar and the navbar will stay in place. Before we move on to the responsive part, let's quickly fix the height of the sidebar. Apply a height of 100 viewport height to make it cover the entire viewport. But this will cause a weird scrolling behavior. Since the sidebar now has a height of 100% of the screen size, it will leave the screen by these 50.4 pixels we applied on its top value. Remember, we placed it here by pushing it down by 50.4 pixels. So we have to use the calculate function to subtract this value of 50.4 pixels from the 100 viewport height. This will work perfectly fine. Our layout is almost complete. One thing we are missing is responsiveness. The layout can grow and shrink since I used fractions for the second column. But the first column has a fixed width of 300 pixels, which is perfect for our sidebar, but not quite responsive. So let's use a media query to change the layout. When we have a max width of 800 pixels, meaning when the screen size of the device is smaller than 800 pixels, then we want to change a few styles. In the developer tools, we can see that 800 pixels is around here in size. Let's select the body and override the grid template columns. On small tablets and smartphones, we only want to have one column and it's going to be one fraction wide, meaning it can grow and shrink responsively. This means instead of two columns, we only have one column. So the sidebar will look pretty weird. Let's apply position fixed instead. This will place the element onto another stacking context. Let's quickly repair the width with a value of 300 pixels. We can see using fixed positioning will make the sidebar cover the rest of the website. If I choose a slightly more transparent background color, you can see that some text will be covered by the sidebar. And this is actually what I want. On smartphone screens, we should be able to open and close the sidebar using a button. And on smartphone screens, when the sidebar is opened, it should simply cover the rest of the website instead of pushing it away. By default, it should be closed. So use display none for that. When we press a button, I want to apply the class show. Here we set the display property back to block. So setting display none and display block can show and hide the sidebar. We can do this with very simple JavaScript code. Create and reference your JavaScript file in the head using the defer attribute. And apply the ID sidebar on the aside element. Because we want to get this element into a JavaScript variable. Const sidebar equals document.getElementById sidebar. Now the aside element will be stored in this variable. Inside the navbar, we create a button. 
This will open and close the sidebar. I recommend to style this properly in CSS and maybe add a menu icon inside. But we can skip this for now. Use the onClick attribute to call a function when the button is pressed. The function will be toggle sidebar. Now let's define this function in our JavaScript code. Function toggle sidebar. And say sidebar.classList.toggle show. This is the class that sets the display property to block. Clicking on the button in the browser will show and hide the sidebar perfectly, because we are toggling the show class on the aside element. And now this should work perfectly in the browser. Alright, this website is far from perfect, but I hope this video taught you how to use CSS Grid and a few responsive techniques to create responsive layouts. I'm currently working on the next part of our CSS Grid series, where we are going to use this very basic grid layout to build a responsive sidebar with modern icons, dropdowns and smooth transitions. If you want to learn how to do that, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell notification. That way you will get notified when I publish the video. This was Coding2Go, and I will see you in the next video.